in this talk, we're going to learn about the clade Lophotrochozoa, which includes different types of invertebrates. Invertebrates are organisms that belong to the domain of Eukarya and the kingdom of Animalia. All invertebrates are multicellular eukaryotic heterotrophs that have tissues but lack a vertebral column or a backbone. The group of invertebrates forms a paraphyletic group because it does not include animals known as vertebrates, even though vertebrates evolved from the same ancestor that the invertebrates evolved from. And hence, there is no clade called as invertebrata since it is a paraphyletic group. Scientists have determined that invertebrates evolved from protists. In fact, coenoflagellates are considered to be the closest relatives to animals, including invertebrates. It is thought that coenoflagellates, which are unicellular protists, aggregated together to eventually form the first invertebrate. In fact, sponges, which are considered to be as one of the earliest animals that evolved, show the presence of these specialized cells called coanocytes that are very similar to coanoflagellates. Invertebrates are grouped into different phyla based on their anatomical features as well as embryonic developmental patterns. There have been more than 35 phyla that have been identified, but most of the invertebrates can be grouped in around 10 phyla. Some of the most important phyla, which has many invertebrates, is listed. And it should be noted that the phylum of Chordata includes not only invertebrates, but also vertebrate animals. Most of the animals present on Earth show bilateral symmetry, and hence they're all grouped into the clade bilateria. Bilaterians can be divided into three clades, which include Lophotrochozoa, Ecdysozoa, and Deuterostomia. The clade of Lophotrochozoa is considered as the most diverse bilaterian clade. It includes more than 18 phyla like platyhelminthes, which include flatworms, mollusca, which include many different kinds of organisms including snails, annelida, which includes organisms like earthworms, Ectopracta and Brachiopoda, which tend to have structures called as lophophores, so on and so forth. Hence, there is a lot of variety in the different types of organisms that are grouped under Lophotrochozoa. Let us learn about the phylum Platyhelminthes. The organisms that belong to this phylum are bilaterally symmetrical tuberoblastic organisms that are protostomes. Thus, during development, they form three germ layers, which are the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. During development, when the blastopore is formed, it forms the mouth of the organism, and hence, these are protostomes. The platyhelminthes lophotrochozoans include flatworms like planarians, tapeworms, and flukes. Tapeworms and flukes are known to cause diseases, and hence, they are important organisms to learn about. Flatworms are given their name because their bodies are flattened dorsoventrally. Flatworms are acelomates in that there is no body cavity. Thus, between the endoderm and the mesodermal layer, there is no space involved. Flatworms do not have a circulatory system and are able to do gas exchange through their flattened bodies directly. When they do have a digestive system, there is only one opening. 
there are certain types of flatworms like tapeworms that don't even have a digestive system and they're able to absorb nutrients right from the skin of their bodies because they tend to be flat. Even though they lack a circulatory system and in some cases a digestive system, they do have other types of systems like an excretory system, a nervous system, and a reproductive system. Now, flatworms can reproduce asexually or sexually, and in many cases, the flatworms tend to be hermaphrodites in that they have both male and female reproductive organs. Another phylum that comes under the clade of Lophotrochozoa is mollusca. Molluscans are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic organisms that are protostomes. Mollusca is the second most diverse phylum of animals. It includes bivalves like clams, organisms like chitons, tusk shells, gastropods like snails, as well as cephalopods like octopus and squid. Thus, we can see a wide variety of sizes and shapes. The body plan of a mollusk includes a muscular foot that plays important roles in movement or locomotion. They also help in attachment, and in some mollusks, they are modified to capture prey. Mollusks also have a visceral mass, and this is where all the internal organs tend to be present. They then have a mantle, which is an epidermal sheet, and this mantle is able to secrete a shell that is observed in many mollusks. Some mollusks show the presence of a mantle cavity, which is created when the mantle gets extended. This cavity can cover certain organs like the gills, as shown in the figure. Mollusks have a spiky tongue-like structure called as the radula, which plays an important role in feeding. Mollusks do tend to have more complex excretory systems than platyhelminths and show the presence of metanephridium, which are these specialized structures that help in getting rid of nitrogenous waste. Mollusks do have a circulatory system, as we can see the presence of a heart, and they tend to have a primitive nervous system. They don't tend to have a brain unless they belong to a certain class, but all mollusks do have nerve cords. Cephalopods, which belong to the class of cephalopoda under the phylum of mollusca, are known to have well-developed nervous system and have a brain. In fact, in the case of octopus, they have a central brain and each of its eight arms has its own mini brain. Other cephalopods like squids are also known to have well-developed brains and many a times more than one brain. Some mollusks tend to be hermaphrodites while others have their own separate sexes. Now, when it comes to the development of mollusks, some mollusks form a distinct type of larval structure called as a trochophore larva. Hence, they come under the clade of Lophotrochozoa. This trochophore larva is motile because it has a tuft of cilia that allows it to move around. There are many clades of mollusks, but some of the more prevalent ones are polyplecophora, which includes the organisms called as chitons. These are marine shell-bearing animals, and they tend to attach to their substrates very tightly through their foot. They're able to use their radula to scrape the surfaces of rocks in order to obtain food. Another major clade is gastropoda, which includes snails and slugs. 
gastropods usually have a single spiral shell and are able to move slowly using their foot. They can be found in a variety of habitats, including the sea, fresh water, as well as on land. Bivalvia is a clade of mollusks that include sessile or non-motile invertebrates that do not have a radula. Bivalves include clams, oysters, and mussels. And when we look at their shell, they tend to have two half shells that are hinged together. Pearls are obtained from organisms that belong to the clade of bivalve. In addition to obtaining pearls from oysters, other members of bivalvia, like clams and mussels, are used as food in many places of the world. Cephalopoda is a clade of mollusca that includes marine predators that have a modified foot. The foot has been modified to form a siphon that allows them to move, as well as part of tentacles that are used to capture prey. Examples of cephalopods include octopus, squid, nautilus, and cuttlefish. Some members of cephalopods still have a shell, while many others have lost their shell. Cephalopods have much more complex nervous systems, as well as other systems, including a circulatory system. The phylum of Annelida includes bilaterally symmetrical tuberblastic invertebrates that are protostomes, and come under the clade of Lophotrochozoa. Annelids are coelomates that show the presence of segmented bodies. The body appears as a series of fused rings. The phylum of Annelida includes organisms like earthworms, leeches, and polychaete worms. Annelids have a body plan that can be considered as a tube within a tube. What we mean by that is that the digestive tube, which is the most internal tube of the body, is suspended in the body cavity or the coelom, which also is a tube-like structure. Annelids have many body segments, but each body segment is separated from the other by a septa. And thus, there are septa between the different body segments which also are able to divide the coelom or partition the coelom. Now within each segment, there are excretory organs, ganglia, which are part of the nervous system, locomotory structures, which include different types of muscles. And what is fascinating is that each muscle present in a segment can expand and contract independently compared to another segment. This allows the organism to move in many complex ways. Each segment may have reproductive organs depending on the type of annelid. By having so many different systems in each segment, if there is a damage to certain segments of the organism, the annelid is still able to survive. All annelids have a nervous system, a closed circulatory system, a digestive system, and are able to reproduce sexually or asexually. Earthworms are well-studied annelids and play a really important role in farming because they are able to loosen up the soil and by burrowing through the soil, they are able to provide more nutritional value to the soil. Similar to earthworms, leeches are also important annelids. They are blood-sucking annelids and hence cause a lot of grief, but on the other hand, they are being used in the medical field for different purposes. 
In fact, the anticoagulant that they make to allow them to suck blood is being used for therapeutic purposes in certain scenarios. With this, we come to the end of our talk where we learned about the different features of invertebrates and characteristics of the clade Lophotrochozoa. We also looked at different phyla that come under the clade Lophotrochozoa that include annelids, mollusks, as well as platyhelminthes.